Diane is a sergeant that works for the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. She is not only a police officer, she is a forensic identification specialist, which means that she looks and examines crime scenes. And further yet, she is an expert in the bloodstain pattern analysis. She is looking at bloodstains that are in one manner or another have been left it at a scene or a crime scene, and she interprets those, which allows the court to understand what it is they see. Physical evidence is always there, but sometimes you need someone that really understands it to be able to interpret and explain it to people. And that's what Diane does, and I think she does it very, very well. If it was a death in which they it left a mark on the hard tissue, so for example, if it was um, blunt trauma or maybe even ballistic trauma, you can tell from that. But if it was something like poisoning or drowning, then obviously you won't be able to tell from just the bones. Diane's additional expertise, it's the study and the decomposition of bodies. When she factors in all the different environmental factors that may come into it, she can come up with an approximate time or age since the body began to decompose. Diane became very important in parts of that Robert William Picton case that I think most people are familiar with. It's the uh, largest single police investigation that's ever happened in Canada, certainly the largest crime scene along with the day-to-day -day work that all forensic identification specialists would have done. Diane, because of her connection with Simon Fraser University, worked with the archaeology department and developed some of the abilities to more quickly and more efficiently locate and identify human remains in this soil. We're talking about acres and acres and massive amounts of dirt that was moved and screened and searched and the protocols that she developed along with uh, the archaeology department, I think, probably sped things up greatly and it was a huge asset for the investigation. And in her international work as a representative of the RCMP, but also a representative of the Canadian government, the first case that she was involved with was the huge disastrous tsunami that happened in Thailand. Well, she and her husband, who is a forensic identification specialist, they went along with other members of a team over to Thailand to assist in the identification of all these this massive amount of bodies that were found. Another case, a similar disaster victim identification was in Haiti. She was one of the first Canadian police officers to attend down there to assist in the identification of the bodies down there. She's been to Africa on several occasions. Rwanda was excavating mass graves. The case in Niger was a case of two Canadian diplomats that had been kidnapped. She also attended in Kenya. In Nairobi, there was a horrible mass murder inside a mall, which she uh, assisted in investigating in there. She's done some tremendous work, and, and the amount of things that she's done outside the country, I think, well, they speak for themselves. I think Diane's goals are the same as what I believe most police officers have, and that is to offer some kind of small grain for the people that are left behind. I think it's it's very important for her to help identify an individual that uh, otherwise might be lost, certainly to, to try and catch the bad guy. That really is, I think, probably a critical part of the way she thinks. I don't know how you couldn't be impressed with, with how much she does, but I think people are, are generally impressed with how much she cares as well. Does she love it? Yeah, she loves it. There's no question about it. And that's one of the reasons that she's been successful and she's been able to go so far in her academic training as well is that she makes it her passion. She finds a way to make it important to her or it is important to her in the first instance. I don't know how, how else to describe it other than that.